Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials, all info, no fluff. Today we're talking about wildcards. Wildcards are a way for you to automatically name files in Reaper, whether that's stuff you are recording into a Reaper project or stuff that you are exporting out of Reaper. So let's get right to it and let's first start with recording. So if you go to preferences, audio, and then recording, you will see this section right here, which helps you set a naming convention for audio that you record inside Reaper. So Reaper's default is track number, then track name, then year, month, day, and time. Now this this is a bit too excessive for me. We can set that to whatever we want. Click on this box here called wildcards. We'll see all our possible options. The dollar sign is just syntax. So these are recognized as wildcards. So make sure to include the dollar sign here. So there's tons of wildcards you can use like track name, folder name, parent name, etc. Or you can get stuff like date, time in multiple formats. Again, if that works for you, or you can always manually type stuff in like what mic you use or something like that. So for the longest time, I used to go with this wildcard structure. So everything would be named after my track and then the number will be incremented based on how many times within that project I hit record. But there is a potential problem with this system. So let's take a look at how this will work. So if I arm my guitar track and record, the first item will be guitar six. Then if I do another pass, that'll be guitar seven, one more time and that'll be guitar eight. Now, if I go and record a bass line, the first one is bass nine, then 10, then 11. And then after that, if I go back to guitar, now that'll be 12. So record pass is project wide and your numbers will jump around between your files if you're recording different tracks. So rig pass is probably more useful when you have a multi mic recording. So you can quickly match everything recorded within the same take. So like here, I got a bunch of drums, bass and a guitar. So when I hit record, all the stuff recorded at the same time will be named after each track. And then the same number will be on all of them. However, for the system that you use at home, and maybe you're just recording instruments one by one, you're all the musicians on your album or something. I think it makes less sense to use rig pass. So what I do nowadays is just use dollar sign track. So just with dollar sign track, whichever thing we're recording, the first item is just named after the track and then each subsequent take is automatically incremented starting with dash zero one then dash zero two and so on so if I switch between them while doing takes the numbers of files per track is going to be in order no matter what order I recorded in but in this case if we record together they will not necessarily have the same number attached to them the number is based on how many recordings in that track have been done so just be aware of that but this is now my preferred method for home recording and now the naming convention of all my audio files across all my projects will be the same basically forever. And I always try and make the names a little more descriptive as well, like fuzz guitar or bass DI. And this is good because you can search through them later if you lose something. Or for example, I recently recorded some tapping guitar. Remember that a long time ago, I did an effects chain that I really liked. So I can just search for tapping guitar in my system. And now I can see that this project is where I had that. So I can go in and extract my effects chain from there. So have a look through the wildcards, set a convention and just forget about it. For some people, date and time may be useful so you can look for stuff you recorded in like May of 2020 when it's 2025 if the planet is not on fire yet by then. I personally just rely on one wildcard now and then as long as I name my tracks my entire naming convention is taken care of in the background and Bob is my parent track sibling. All right now let's look at wildcards when we render files out of Reaper and it's especially useful for batch rendering stuff. For example say I want to render stems out of this song I'm doing to send out to a producer. So with wildcards I won't have to name them individually. So first as a side tip I'm going to go to my track manager by pressing command shift and M and here under option you can tick this box called mirror track selection so now if I just write bus in the filter window I will see just my top level bus tracks so with wildcards not only I can batch render all of these at once and auto name them but I can also save this as a preset and then whenever I want to export stems I can recall this preset so I'll show you the way I set this up the wildcard syntax is the same here you can always type them in if you remember otherwise again you can click the wildcard box right here and you can look through your options. Now this time I do want to number these because that way they will be received in the same order that I have them in my project. And I also don't want to use dollar sign track number here because these track numbers are not in order. So my first drum bus is track three, next one is 18, this one is 74 and so on. So if we choose track number here, those numbers will be printed. But instead I can have a look here and I'll see, oh right here we got dollar sign file number. And now if I click below where it says eight files, I can see the name of these eight files and we can see that they are numbered one to eight. So I'll then just put a dash here and then type in dollar sign track. Now our tracks are numbered one through eight and then the name of the bus follows. I also want these in a folder, but again, I don't want to manually name my folder. So I can go to the beginning. I'll add dollar sign project to add my project name here. And I'll even include dollar sign BPM and dollar sign time signature to include those bits of information in my folder name as well. So my tracks are just named after the buses, but they are in a folder that has all the information that they may need. 
So after these first three wildcards, I'll just type in a forward slash. So this will make a folder and name it by everything you see on the left here. Each item inside that folder is named how it was before. So the folder is named after the project name and then the BPM and time signature of the project. And just to be extra explicit, I'll also manually type in BPM right here. And obviously you can have as many forward slashes as you want to create extra folders inside other folders. And I'll show you that in a second as well. To make the folder structure work, you gotta make sure you go to wildcards and then here under options, you make sure allow forward slash to create a directory is ticked. So then once I'm sure all my render settings are correct, I can come up here to preset and I can go down to save preset and I can save this as a preset. <laughs> Call it stem rendering. And now whenever I need to print stems in any project, I can just recall this setting. So as long as I set my project name correctly and track names, I don't have to do all of these clerical tasks ever again for as long as I print stems. Yay! So let's render these and while that renders, let me just show you that you can see the bounds in my render settings are set to entire project. You can quickly denote the start and end of your project with two markers called equal sign start and equal sign end, all capitals. If you rely on a time selection and then somebody asks for a revision, you gotta make sure your time selection starts at exactly the same place. But with these markers and then setting your bounds to entire project, you will always make sure you have the exact same length for all your stems. And you can also manually make sure that you have all your reverb tails and so on sorted out. But anyway, let's just see how the files look and we'll see in this folder in our project directory. We got all of them. It says the project name. And if I want, I can manually change this to six forward slash eight instead of a dash. Inside this folder, we'll see all our eight files in the same order that I had them in, all in the same length. Awesome. Now, if you're printing multi-tracks, we can kind of start off from here. So with all our buses selected, I'll clear the filter in track manager to reveal all my tracks. And I'll run this SWS action here called select only children of selected folder. So in my render window, we can now see that there will be 89 files printed. Now I can use this other wildcard called dollar sign folder. So every item will inherit the name of its parents, but I'll put another forward slash in between that and our usual wildcards. So now here we can see all our files to be printed and based on which bus they are under, they will also be placed in another subfolder with that bus name. So save this as another preset, render it. And now we get the same folder and within that folder, we'll get a bunch of folders, real nice and neat. And I think that's pretty cool. Pretty, pretty, Pretty. So far we've done stuff where the length of everything we were rendering was the same. So now let's look at one last example where this isn't the case. I have a bunch of mixes I want to master and export. So I'll drag them into Reaper and I'll put them on this single track. Next, I'll run this custom action I have called Mastering Clericals, which I explained in an old video. So I'll put the link to that up there in the description if you're interested, but then this happens. So now all I got to do is name the folder after my album, go to render window, load my preset called Mastering Album with metadata. Now metadata deserves its own video so let's not even get into that. But as you can see, my source is now region render matrix and my bounds are all project regions. I can click here to open the region matrix and here I have to just connect every track to every region in order. So the first track is the album name. So I'll just drag a line across this and we're already ready to print our album. So let's look at the wildcard structure here. The main folder is named after the album. Dollar sign folder will make this the name of the folder. Then there will be two subfolders named by the format because I'm printing wave as primary output format and in in secondary I'm printing mp3 and then inside each folder there will be six files named after my mixes and hopefully this time you can imagine what the folders will look like if I print but now if I'm doing a mastering project I'm just doing the actual mastering and I'm not worried about formatting and setting all my render settings printing stuff one by one and naming them and all of that so hopefully you can see how useful these are and hopefully you can appreciate that I couldn't possibly cover all of them in a short video so have a play yourself look through them and see how you can get use out of them even when it comes to music these are only semi-convenient because it's not too much work to name, you know, six tracks or 12 tracks. But when it comes to organizing and naming sound effects, samples and loops, or game audio assets and stuff like that, then wildcards are literally what makes Reaper an industry standard in those fields. I don't know how many game audio or field recording people follow my channel, but if you do, let me know in the comments and I'll show you some of the stuff that I get up to. Otherwise, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. If you really like my work, you can become a member of this channel and click the join icon below. You can also donate to me through buymeacoffee.com. The link to that will be in the description. Thanks to both for yet another donation to the channel. I really appreciate you supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Thank you so much. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you very soon. Bye.